What's happening? Adam Drake here, and today we are going to talk about brake linkage and also um, the overall amount of brake force that I feel is needed for racing off-road. So I've done a few clinics recently, and in those clinics, one of the things that we do is we go over some of the radio settings and also setting up your throttle linkage, the throttle pull, and also the brake linkage. And what I've learned from doing some of those clinics is that there needs to be a little bit more in-depth information to help people setting up their brakes because your brakes are really, really important. It's a critical part of your setup. And I believe it's also overlooked sometimes. So we're gonna start by just doing the initial uh, kind of overview of the linkage. And we will then start with setting the brake dead band and then also the brake bias front to rear. And then I want to talk a little bit at the end about the amount of brake that's actually needed for off-road. So we'll go ahead, change the camera angle, and we'll take a closer look. Okay, so I'm using Rhonda's buggy for this video uh, just because we just put new servos in it. So I figured it'd be a perfect time to go ahead and go through the uh, kind of setup that I do for the brakes. So I'll move the air filter out of the way just so hopefully you guys can see it a little bit better. And first thing I'm gonna do, I guess, is go ahead and just run through um, setting up the throttle pull. I'm not gonna go super in depth, but I just wanna do that because that's what you should actually set first. So when setting the throttle pull, the big thing that you're looking for is you wanna make sure that you have a small amount of dead band between the throttle horn and this outer collar. If there's no dead band at all, it can actually have the carburetor open slightly, which is gonna cause tuning problems. And by that, what I mean is, if the carburetor is slightly opened and you set the idle with the linkage set in properly, you'll turn the idle down and then when you go to hit the brakes, the idle is going to go lower than what it's uh, supposed to and the engine could die. So we'll start just by adjusting this outer collar. And you want to just have just a really, really slight amount of dead band. Basically about the gap of a couple sheets of paper or like a business card. And then... I'll go ahead and just slowly pull the throttle and make sure that it doesn't overextend past what the carburetor is able to open. As you can see, I have just a little bit of gap here. And this engine has a 6.5 millimeter Venturi. So we'll go ahead and take the calipers, zero it out, and then slowly pull the throttle open and I'm at 6.1. So I'll go into the radio settings, linkage menu, endpoints, for forward, and we're gonna just turn it up a couple percent until we get this number to be at 6.5. And I have other videos on setting your throttle high point. Um, again, not gonna go super in depth on that, just this is kind of the first step or part of setting the linkage. So now we're at 6.43, that's close enough, six and a half Venturi. If you're within 6.4 to 6.6, .6, I would say you're good to go. Now on the brake side, I see a lot of times where guys overlook the importance of their brake biased. And if you run too much front brake, the car is going to lock up and skid and not have any steering through the middle of the corner. If you don't run enough front brake or you have too much rear brake, the rear is gonna skid and wanna spin out going into the corner. So I'll start by just doing a real quick um, brake bias check. And what I'll do is I'll do the rubber band trick here 
that was from Cody Graham's where it just holds the brakes on for me. And then I will just check the tension or the amount of resistance for both the front and the rear tires. So right now I have slightly more front brake than rear, which is normal. So I'm at least close or I'm in the range, but the next thing that I wanna check is really, really important. And that is the brake dead band. Because you wanna make sure you have all this movement of trigger for the brakes, you wanna use the majority of that trigger movement to apply the brakes. You don't want it to be no brakes until the very end because it's gonna just be harder to kind of hit your marks and slow down for the corners. So what I like to do is just slowly roll the car and then I will slowly apply a little bit of brakes and you can see the servo horn moving until it stops. Now, if I take this 1.5 millimeter wrench, it just fits in that gap. So I currently have about 1.5 millimeters of dead band before the brakes start to engage. And I would say one and a half to two millimeters of dead band on the brake side is fine. You, you definitely wanna use or have more dead band on the brake side than what you would on the throttle side because let's face it, you're not quite as smooth on the brakes as you are the throttle. What you wanna make sure that you don't have is say I have six millimeters of brake uh, travel. You wanna make sure that you don't have four or five millimeters of dead band because then that's only gonna give you two millimeters of movement to actually use and get a feel for your brake. So right now we're at about one and a half millimeters. So that's about perfect. So from there, I will hold full brake and just feel the tension by holding the one tire and turning the other. Or if you want to use the rubber band trick and hold the brakes on, you can just go ahead and turn both tires and feel the amount of tension. So right now we have quite a bit of front brake, maybe a little bit more than what I would like to start with. So I'm gonna reduce the front brake force just slightly. And then I'll go ahead and feel the rear brakes. The rear brakes have a little bit less tension than the front, but still have a uh, pretty good amount of force. So that'll be where we wanna start. Um, I would say it's, it's basically a 60-40 setting right now. So 60% of the brake or the force is going to the front tires and 40% to the back. And that'll just depend on the track. And you can adjust that for your driving style or the track conditions. If you need the car to rotate a little bit more, you could slightly reduce the front brake force and add to the rear brakes. Um, if you're on a track where um, it gets really, really bumpy and you need to make sure that the car brakes really straight and you're not really concerned about it rotating through the middle of the corner, um, you may even want a little bit more front brake, maybe 70% front, 30% rear. Um, you don't wanna get to where you have uh, too little rear brake though, because it can be a little bit harder to make the front end drop in the air because it's kind of pivoting more around the rear tires. Um, but I would say 30% rear, 70 front would be um, kind of the safest bet, but normally we end up right around 60 front, 40 rear. Now, this setting isn't very easy to, there's no gauge for it, or maybe there is a gauge out there that I'm just not aware of, but it really comes down to your feelings. So when you come off the track and everything feels really good, the brakes are still warm, just come down, hold the brakes on, check and feel the brake force, just so you know for your next race what that should, 
should kind of feel like if the conditions stay the same. Um, your brakes are super, super important and they can really have a big impact on how your car handles. So kind of the last thing I wanna to touch base with on this video is the amount of brake that's needed to actually slow down and have your car um, brake straight and be able to make the corner. A lot of times I'll pick up guys' cars to tune their engine, run it up and down the straightaway, and the amount of brake force that I see a lot of guys use is excessive. It's, it's extremely high, and I think sometimes that's because they maybe made adjustments or they were running their car up and down the street. And a really important thing to remember is that you'll need to adjust your brakes around the amount of traction that you're you're running the car on. So if you're running in the street and there's a ton of traction, you may need to either adjust your bias slightly or just turn the EPA up on your radio. But in most cases we get on dirt and there's not much grip and it gets a little bit dusty and maybe even some like marbles that if you run too much brake it's gonna be like driving a car on ice without anti-lock brakes. It's, it's gonna lock up, it's not gonna be stable. So I like to always start with my brakes maybe a little bit on the mild side, and then as the grip improves, or if the grip improves, I'll run slightly more brake. And when you set your dead band to where you don't have much dead band on the brake side, you'll also be able to run a slightly lower EPA. Like currently with where I have Rhonda's car where we plan to start for the next race, her brake EPA is at 30%. Now, if there was more dead band, the servo would have to travel farther before the brakes start to engage. The EPA on the radio is gonna have to be higher. But Something to play with, I would, I would definitely test trying to run a little bit less brake, a little bit less dead band on the brake side so that you have more control when applying the brakes um, because they, they come in earlier and then it's a more linear curve as you roll the brakes on um, when you're entering a corner. So hopefully this was helpful and uh, something for you guys to kind of test and try out at your local track to where you can kind of get a handle on it and get a feel for what you like for yourself. And we'll see you in the next video.